Happy Monday, everybody. How is, how are all y'all doing out there in the, uh, I'll turn my lights on. My goodness, it's dark in here. I'm sorry about this, y'all. Man, uh, I have got a ton of news and I want you to be able to see and hear me clearly. Um, so give me a sound check, everybody. I uh, had a couple of sound issues earlier, so I just want to make sure that y'all can hear me and see me okay. Um, uh, where is everybody watching from? All right. I think I'm ready to go now. Um, I'm not going to play around. I got some big news for y'all. Uh, I am very excited that I'm, I'm not excited that the season is coming to an end, but I'm already very excited about what is to come. 2020 is going to be off the hinges, y'all, and we're going to start right here in 2021 on this episode of The Starting Line, and I'm going to give you uh, the schedule for 2022, and we are also going to talk about some huge changes uh, for the National Rock Racing Association. Jed Harper says we sound good. Travis Sullivan's watching in Missouri. We've got another uh, person watching in Missouri. Scott Henson joining us. Timmy Chuck Racing in the house. Jared Davidson checking in. Uh, Bolt check, not going well, Jared. Not going well. Um, <clears throat> definitely had uh, sound issues earlier. And then... Uh, having some lighting issues today but we're all here and i've got some news for you i'm going to start with putting this up on the screen countdown to bridgeport texas we are heading back there um we missed bridgeport this year due to a terrible ice storm that those guys had down there um it pretty much locked up from Texas to Tennessee, from what I saw on the news. So, uh, you know, um, uh, it'll be good to get back to Bridgeport. If you see there, we have the uh, countdown is days, hours, uh, minutes. So we have 94 days until we are back racing again. So let's go over those dates. Um, and then we will get into some more in-depth stuff of what we're going to be seeing in 2022. Uh, Billy McGrath checking in says, snowing here in northern Michigan. You can keep that. Uh, I had to put a hoodie on this morning. It was 80. Justin Wills, too close to hammers. Yeah, Justin making some huge changes. Uh, Justin Wills, our NRRA Rookie of the Year. Uh, that Justin Wills making some huge changes in his stable, getting ready to uh, race some Ultra 4 cars. That's pretty cool. Timmy Chuck says, I didn't miss Texas. You were the only one that didn't miss Texas. Timmy Chuck uh, racing was down there ready to kick the year off, and they did it with uh, um, Mr. Cockroach Buggy himself. Their, uh, his name is slipping my mind. I'm sorry, Aaron. Aaron. My bad, man. Um, Scott Henson is in the, would you say, the land of bacon? Bacon town? Bacon, bacon town. Oh, man, I would love to see me some bacon on the hills. Uh, we got to see um, we got to see him on the hill a few times this year, but uh, it's never the same when the whole ba bacon family is there and uh, Mama Bacon's out there cheering her boys on. Man, I love it. What a great family. Chris Grigg in the house, a uh, bunch of you guys from North Carolina joining us. Let's talk about the schedule. February 18th and 19th, we are going to be uh, at Bridgeport, Texas. Um, this is a unique park in that uh, Bridgeport is owned by the town. And it, it is an off-road park. It is an old mining area and so it's kind of like pits if uh, i grew up riding four wheelers and dirt bikes in in pits in maine that's kind of how i grew up riding and uh 
So that that's kind of what it reminds me of. A lot of rock, um, but some gnarly trails, man, and uh, some good race areas. Some good race areas. So it'll be cool. It's crazy when you drive into Bridgeport. It's like, uh, you know, there's just this massive hill. And that's, that's basically what we're on top of uh, when we're racing. It's like the only hill you can see 10 miles out uh, on a good clear day. It's crazy. Um, all right, so uh, not long after that, a couple of weeks after, March 4th and 5th, we are going to be back at Windrock. Um, so 2021, because we were not able to start the season in Bridgeport, we actually kicked the year off uh, this year at Windrock. And we had a huge turnout, unbelievable turnout. I think everybody was just done with the COVID crap. They were done being stuck inside and not being able to get out. And uh, man, the they turned people turned out in droves. It was awesome. Uh, at one point, we have a drone shot of the line of cars waiting to get in, and it was all the way out. I mean, it was it was at least a mile long, probably more. Uh, we got a hundred people watching in here. So was were you stuck in that traffic? Let us know in the comments. Uh, let's see, Sean Keller in the house. Sean Keller, our uh, guest cameraman, Sean Keller from Keller RC Performance. He raced at finals this year in the RC class. Timmy Chuck says, uh, uh, KW says, hi, Nick, as he's headed to bed after signing autographs all night. That is awesome. Cutter Wayne, uh, I was, took me a second to what KW was. I was thinking Kawasaki for some reason. I don't know where my mind's at, Timmy, but uh, tell him I said good night, young man, and uh, I'm proud of him. Merrill Hutchinson uh, checking in. Yes, sir. And Justin Wills. Uh, I'm going to need to get one too. All right. So uh, March 25th and 26th, we're going to be back at Wildcat. It was a wet weekend this year at Wildcat. Uh, so we'll see what Mother Nature has in store for us at uh, uh, Wildcat next year. Now this is going to be this is a this is a cool one, man. I'm excited about it announcing this year's um, uh, where we're going to be racing at uh, because there's a couple of new spots in there. Um, uh, Hot Springs is uh, going to be not new to the NRRA. The NRRA has a deep history in, in racing uh, at Hot Springs. We were just there for a charity event uh, for the Hot Springs um, Bounty Hill that they had there, for UTVs only, racing on Showtime Hill, one of the most iconic race hills out there. Okay, um, so I personally got to explore a little bit of Hot Springs, and I'm excited. I am excited because it is going to make... It is just going to add another layer to the depth of the courses that Clyde has in store for these guys, man. Every year, it just seems like they get more complex and so complex that at finals, he had to draw them maps. Uh, Brandon Davis made a comment that uh, uh, he, he had to memorize 12 race hills because he was racing in... A couple of different classes right racing in UTV stock uh, UTV open is different than UTV stock and then you and then the bouncer class is different from UTV stock and so 12 hills he had to memorize four per uh, class unbelievable uh, and and he did man Clyde had maps all drawn out it was you know the, the level of professionalism is growing by leaps and bounds. I'll take a quick sip of water dry out here in the desert I was making a comment uh, I told my dad earlier that I had to put a hoodie on it was 80 uh, Carrie Gordon says awesome loved hot springs years ago uh, they went out there I tell you the new owners are doing a lot they really want to uh, they've changed the park a lot per Clyde and a few others who have been out there a lot all right after Hot Springs, we're going to go to Mid-America. We were at Mid-America uh, the spring earlier this year 
as well as at finals. And um, Mid-America is so vast with so many race areas that uh, we can literally race there twice and not race the same hills. So very, very cool stuff. I'm very excited. Um, that is going to be our uh, what we come back from as far as our summer break. So we race April 8th and 9th at Hot Springs, and then we have the rest of April, June, and almost half of July off before we're back to racing. So for those of y'all that are looking to plan your vacations and, and stuff around that, that's, uh, that's what a lot of people always look for. August 5th and 6th, just a few weeks after that, we're going to be back to Hawk Pride. Hawk Pride always, with that, they have got just that one hillside that goes for ever um tons of racing at hot pride I, I can't i hope we race a different area we have every time i've been there um august 26 and 27th again just a few weeks after that we're going to be back at hollerwood uh that hollerwood bowl is so cool to film as a as a cameraman it's uh it's so fun to film it, it's it allows you to really see the entire race course for the most part and uh add in drone footage it's just uh it was a great great trip to hollywood this year earlier this year uh september uh get into the fall rush springs ranch uh always a beautiful spot and man clyde had us all out in the woods and from the sounds of it the owners are looking to clear a whole nother area, which is really going to open that space up, not only for racing, but for viewing as well. And um, really looking forward to getting back to Rush Springs. They always have always have a good, uh, it, one of the few course, uh, courses that incorporates a legit short course track. So the buggies really get to get out and open them up. I, I really like that part about it. Clyde always incorporates that. It, it uh, makes for a lot of fast racing, um, but they've got those hills are so nasty that uh, some of those ledges, it's it's cool. All right, um, October seventh and eighth. I'm not gonna give uh, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna give a whole lot up. And and by the way, all of this can be found at the National Rock Racing website that's scrolling above my head. All right, so if you want to follow along or if you don't want to listen to me, Babylon, you can uh, go and check that out right now. Uh, Bikini Bottoms, October 7th and 8th. Um, only going to be making it there one time this year, but uh, uh, I will say that you might not want to miss that one. This this past fall race that we had at Bikini Bottoms was quite epic. Uh, Wes Keen returning to racing, just unbelievable. That guy is... Uh, built to something else, man. I tell you, um, that that was it was an epic race. That was an epic race. Uh, so it'll be good to get back to those nasty monster hills at Bikini Bottoms, and then October 27th and through the 31st, we are going to be uh, back to finals, back to Mid America for finals. And what better place to uh, wrap up the season? As hopefully a lot of y'all saw. Uh, at finals this year, unbelievable award ceremony, uh, you know, concerts and stuff, just top notch, top notch place. Um, all right, so I am going to get on over to nationalrockracing.com and I'm going to read this stuff, <coughs> excuse me, right off the website because I want you all to know that uh, this is what you're going to be able to find. Um, okay, for one, the first, uh, the first um, iteration of, of pre-registration starts now. Okay, it is open. It is ready to go. You can sign up and save yourself. This is going to be the most savings uh, that you are going to get. The next iteration you'll still be able to save some money but not as much and then after you miss that one if you miss that one then you are um, you are uh, it, it's just gonna be the full price 
Okay, you can still pre-register, but it's just gonna be it's gonna be full price. Brian Nickel uh, making a comment here. No dirty turtle. Uh, no, no, Brian. Uh, I heard that. Uh, me personally, um, I heard that they uh, were exchanging hands. It was uh, the park was being sold. Um, so if you go to National Rock Racing Association.com, not going to National Rock Racing.com, uh, and go to pre registration. You will find a spot to fill in your name, your co driver if you have one, where you're from, who built your chassis, all of the all of the tech sheet stuff. Okay, you keep scrolling down and it says class entry. When you pull down that tab, you have the option of two four six eight classes eight classes do you uh do y'all know how many classes we had this year it wasn't eight let me read off the classes that we have okay uh for the rc drivers rc plastic class and rc metal class um i i know that we had like an open and and uh, stock class this year, we tried to try to do that. There wasn't as much of an interest in the uh, um, in, in that in the stock part of it. So I think the RC plastic versus RC metal, you know, splitting those two up. I think that'll be uh, I think that'll work out. I, I, I like that. Um, UTV classes. All right, we are going to start a UTV youth class. That is going to be uh, the new addition, and I think that this is really going to open up uh, a whole new arena for you know for our our young younger crowd. I mean, we we do have some guys. Cash Lacroix is, is an animal uh, behind the wheel. You know, he's a top driver with adults. <laughs> you know. But um, I really like, I really like this, and uh, um, I really feel like it's going to open up, like I said, a whole nother, a whole nother arena for racing. I think it's going to be epic. Um, UTV stock class is coming back. I thought that the UTV stock class was a great addition. It was so cool to see guys like Brandon Davis. <clears throat> racing a stock he started off in a stock Polaris uh, razor then he moved to Can-Am and then uh, he he had a single seat tube chassis uh, buggy for the unlimited class then he just started racing the stock buggy in the stock class and the unlimited class uh, you know it, it was um, way good again another Can-Am Paul Paul Wolf, you know, in a full body. So uh, the UTV stock class, I, I really think that we're going to see some growth in that class because it really allows people, uh, and uh, I, I hate to be negative about it, but seriously, y'all, if you are on if you are on the message boards or whatever, if that's even a thing anymore, and, and you're talking crap, please come out and race, you know, bring bring what you got and and let's see you up against Brandon Davis and Wade Good and, and let's see how you do <laughs> you know put your put your money where your mouth is that that's perfect for that class it's it's the average Joe racing with all these guys that that uh, you know get out in front of the camera all, uh, every race um, you know the big names for sure Paul Wolf uh, all these guys you know very successful drivers um, UTV Unlimited will be back. That is always the the heavy the heavy weights of the UTV class. Man, um, UTV Unlimited is so uh, competitive, so competitive now. Um, and then the UTV Bounty class, which are the guys with the uh, you know the big brains, you know, the the big confidence. You, you gotta have, you gotta be a little different to be a bounty driver, man. I'm telling you, these guys that are running just the bounty series are only there for the big hills, man. Trust me. Um, so it'll be cool to, to have those guys back. Now, 
some announcements. Uh, we are adding a bouncer class. Check this out. The bouncer VIN class, all right, is going to be just what it sounds like. You're going to be running some nasty race hills, and the rig that you bring had to start life with a VIN number. Um, I'm not going to go over the rules and everything because that's quite extensive. I'm going to try to keep this fairly short this evening. But start studying up on this bouncer VIN class because I think that I think that this is going to be. Uh, uh, I have seen Dex Browder out there at RBD in Jeep Cherokees going up stuff that uh, man. Uh, I can only imagine if you just put a little bit more work into that Cherokee and what what we could be doing with it out there in the woods so um, I, I'm excited for the VIN class that's for sure uh, let's see who we got here Andy Chapman checking in Miss Christina Davidson from talking about uh, mid-america uh, Jed Harper can I run the parks again okay February 18th and 19th Bridgeport March 4th and 5th Windrock March 25th and 26th, Wildcat, April 8th through the 9th, Hot Springs, July 13th through the 17th, Mid-America, August 5th and 6th, Hawk Pride, August 26th and 27th, Hollerwood, September 16th and 17th, Rush Springs Ranch, October 7th and 8th, Bikini Bottoms, and then finals is October, is October 27th through the 31st, at Mid America, we have Halloween there. So, um, let's see. Justin Wills, will 170s be on Friday or Saturday? And Jared uh, Davidson, yeah, age limits. We're, we'll, um, again, all of this stuff is going to be at uh, on the website, y'all. So I would just say start perusing it, and I will go over the real nitty-gritty details here uh, you know we got plenty of time we got 94 days until race season so uh, it'll give us plenty to talk about um, let's see here Merrill Hutchinson's I got a semi stock Cherokee all right there you go Justin Wills on the chat don't remember an age okay uh, all right um, Colton, the final dates that I mentioned, it they're they're what I took off from the website. You talking about for finals, October twenty seventh through the thirty first, Mid America, um, Bikini Bottoms, October seventh and eighth. Uh, let's see. All right. So we have got some class uh, additions there and um, some class change ups. So lots to uh, lots to go over. I'm just perusing the rules website. I mean, it's um, it is all right here, y'all. I really would love to see y'all go and visit this website. I know that Clyde and, and his team puts in a ton of work to get all of this stuff on there. Um, one thing I do want to mention, though, about rules is uh, coming up in 2022, we are strongly recommending a fire uh, suppression system. Um, we will do all we can to help facilitate anybody who is interested uh, in getting one this year. And the reason why is because in 2023, it will be mandatory. Okay, so just uh, something to consider. We only want what can be the absolute safest possibility for our drivers. That is it. Um, let's see here. Brian Dunnigan, Mr. Rock Life himself. So this youth class, is it 
like hill climb style or 170. Uh, well, let's let's take a look at the old. Uh, let's see what the website says here. Uh, beef class all front and side plastic must remain must maintain OEM chassis gusseting and cage upgrades are allowed so I don't have much info on what style of racing it'll be but I can guess that if they are going to be you know, the 170s is probably going to be more like the unlimited, uh, you know, the unlimited racing is more short course than hill killing, you know. But I think that's awesome. I think that is excellent. Yeah, 170, 200 classes would be more of a course style racing. Yeah, exactly. So, Clyde, Clyde checking in. I appreciate that, Clyde, for the assist. Um, <coughs> let's see, uh, you know, back to the RC class, we we're talking about, uh, there being a plastic class and a metal chassis class. When we talk plastic versus metal, we're talking about the chassis. Um, uh, it is that part of rock bouncing has grown so fast and, uh, um, I know that this year coming up, we're going to see a lot of um, uh, local, the RC community is, is vast. It's way bigger than I thought it, it ever could have been. Um, and we're going to get to see a lot of uh, local folks getting involved this year, uh, whether it be a club or a or whatever and uh, I, I think it's cool it's gonna be cool to see um, a different twist as, as we had uh, Curtis uh, flying in this year and building the RC courses Curtis is a master hill builder uh, he can look at a, a patch of land and do things with it that I could never imagine uh, but uh, it'll be cool to see some participation from local folks who uh, are looking to get involved and and i love the experience man i love um having people come in and just be part of the circus you know i, I like to call it a circus it's pretty it's pretty much what it is the circus rolls into town and set up and uh hold the event and then we take everything down and roll out of town you know just just like the circus used to do man and, uh, do they even have circuses anymore anyway uh, um so uh, I'm excited to see uh, the, the Hobacks who are stepping up uh, for the 2022 season. They are no uh, um, strangers to the, the race scene for sure. They've been in it, you know, since the beginning um, and playing a bigger role in these recent years to include standing on the podium uh, for the first year first ever year that the nrra added the rc class uh and then more recently this past year standing on um the podium overall for the season so congratulations to those guys very excited to see uh those guys handling the rc class this year i think they'll be perfect for it and looking to uh i'm excited to see who they get involved as we you know move across the country in in different locations um uh back to safety back to uh safety stuff that i i wanted to bring up want to make sure that you have a master cutoff switch that is blatantly obvious where uh where it is on your buggy okay it, it, it needs to be in plain sight and easily accessible please um we've got a lot of news a lot of folks uh in anticipating new buggy builds i was just uh, on my our sister show here on the hill with nick i was talking to kenneth cozine uh and i want to ask all y'all um uh what are your thoughts on tim cameron's new buggy what do you think he's going to be uh what do you think he's going to be coming up with so that ought to that ought to make the chat go crazy 
Um, really, uh, uh, that VIN class, man, I keep kind of... I mean, you could... There have been some pretty nasty uh, f full cab... White Lightning is what I'm trying to what I would what I'm trying to explain. Truggies, I guess you could call it. Um, man, I I'm excited to see what some of these guys are gonna come up with in this VIN class. Um, I think the beater style racing is always, you know, that's more that's more realistic. Honestly, when when we roll into town. No matter what race series we're talking about, you know, you're talking about guys, some some buggies that have thirty, forty thousand dollars in motors, maybe more, uh, in, in some of them, you know, uh, um, <laughs> the the VIN class, this VIN class is, I, I just picture there being a line of beaters uh, <laughs> out the gate lined up, and you know, we get fifty. 50 beaters out there that are looking to uh, to have a go at the course. Clyde, I know you're watching. What are your plans with – are you going to make them run the same hills? Can you imagine a beater class trying to go up Trump's wall at, at Bikini Bottoms or or, or uh, Fable Hill at Bikini Bottoms, man? <laughs> There's just no way. There's no way. What – that's going to be fun, y'all. I am very excited about uh, uh, 2022. Uh, and just for situational awareness, before so signing on to this show here, logging on here, um, people are already signing up. People are already signing up for the season. So uh, I hadn't even announced it yet. and We hadn't even announced that it was available. Somebody literally was watching the site, uh, and it was a couple of people too. So... Um, I am, I am excited for 2022. Uh, I hope that this was informative enough. Again, nationalrockracing.com is your friend. The schedule is there. Um, uh, rules and, and keep watching for the site for updates and, uh, and stuff because Clyde is going to be, uh, constantly updating it, making little changes, um, uh, because we want to, you know, we want to be as transparent as possible um, and and as professional as possible as, as uh, you know, what keeps this series growing. Okay, so um, uh, drivers, there is a note on there about media packages and uh, uh, just hit me up if you have any questions about it. That is going to be something that we absolutely want to start pushing for our season drivers this year because um, we want to try to get as much spotlight on these drivers and get them as much help as they can um, because they are the ones that are out here sacrificing uh, and, and uh, you know, spending a lot of money. A lot of them have to spend a lot of money, uh, especially if they're running on that ragged edge. They sacrifice a lot. Um, Colton Hoback says, tell them to take a look at the rules for VIN class. Must have master cutoff, five-point harness, Hans, extinguisher. Don't just show up with a regular trail rig. Absolutely, Colton. Good call, man. Good call. Uh, Jed Harper, Dan Carter Racing, you running Debo Derbies also. I would love to see Dan Carter uh, in a Debo Derby. <coughs> So Dan Carter is looking for a 170 and a Crown Vic. Uh, yeah, you gotta make sure. I don't know about a Crown Vic. <laughs> Brian Dudley Southern Rock Racing Series. Uh, can I borrow your truck for the VIN class? Yee! Justin Hoback, anyone interested in youth class, contact me and I will add you to a group discussion. Very cool, Chris Gray. Uh, Make to read the rules. Make make to read the rules. Justin Wills. 
I'm interested in youth classes. I run East Coast Razor 170 Youth UTV Racing uh, youth, youth UTV Racing page. All right. Well, my lights have given up on me. So with that, I'm caught up on comments. If you guys have anything else, uh, hit me up, message me, message uh, the pages on Facebook. Um, we are also on Instagram and YouTube and TikTok. So uh, hit us up on any one of those platforms as well. If you have any questions, uh, you probably won't see me for a couple of weeks. We're going to start doing a show every couple of weeks or so, uh, or as important updates come in. But, um, yep, 94 days now, just uh, just a little over three months, and we'll be back to racing, y'all. All right, everybody, I appreciate all y'all hanging out with me this late tonight. I look forward to seeing all y'all soon.